Hey everyone, and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Minolta Maxim Cutesy. In the first video, we talked about what everything on this camera is. In this video, we're gonna go through and talk about what everything does. Now, this is a fully automatic and mechanical, or a fully automatic and electronic camera. It can do nothing whatsoever without batteries. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over here to the battery chamber and talk about how to install batteries in this camera. So here's the battery chamber. I'm just gonna open it up. You can usually do it with a coin. Uh, feeling kind of lazy, don't wanna grab one, so I'm just gonna use my thumbnail and open it up. You can see two, there's two CR2 batteries inside of this camera. Loading them is pretty simple. There's a little guide on the inside so that you can be reminded of how they go, but it is positive terminal, goes towards the bottom of the camera, just like that. Then when you're done, you simply close the battery chamber and then rotate the lock back into place when that is locked in place, the camera can then be turned on and everything will fire up as it's supposed to. Next, let's talk about how to mount and remove lenses. One of the nice things about an interchangeable lens camera is that you can change lenses at any time when you're not taking a photo and it won't mess up your film. To remove a lens, you push down on the lens release button and start turning counter or anti-clockwise until it's, the lens stops and then just pull it off like that. To mount a lens, you find the red indexing mount on the lens and the red indexing mount dot on the camera. Line them up and turn them until this clicks in place. And now you've mounted the lens. It's really actually pretty simple. This can use any Minolta or Sony alpha mount lens, not the E mount, but any Minolta or Sony A mount lens will work on this camera. Full frame Sony lens. Next up, let's talk about how to load film in this camera. We access the back by opening the back with the unlock here. And now here is the back of the camera. As I noted in the first video, if your film does not have a DX code reader, then I believe that this camera defaults to 100 ISO. We're gonna find out when we load this film here in just a second. To load the film, it's a really simple action. You angle this the, the, not, the nubby portion of the film there into the bottom of the cassette of the film chamber load it in until it sits flush, pull out a leader, drop the leader over here past the orange index, shut the back, and the camera will automatically take up the film. If that number says one, you know that the film is properly loaded. And it does in fact look like it's going to accept this without uh, the DX code on it, which means I do think it's going to default to 100 ISO, but it's also not gonna let me find that out and I don't have it in my notes going off of memory on that one. So the way that film works is basically you load it and then the camera, you're, you'll take photos and the camera will automatically calculate the best shutter speed and aperture based on the light that's in front of it. And it will advance the film every time you take a photo. Normally, uh, this is the point where I'd show you it being round and all that, but this camera's automatic and uh, there's a lot that it's not gonna let me do. But I can show you, I think, unless it locks the film back. Nope, it doesn't, good. What happens inside as you take photos? It's not actually gonna let me do that, is it? Yeah, it's not, gonna, not going to actually advance the film. But basically, whenever you take a photo, the camera advances the film so that you have the photo here, advances the film, the clean film here. Film can record light exactly one time in a controlled manner with a, a proper shutter speed and aperture or in an uncontrolled manner like this, where it will absorb every photon it can absorb until it can't absorb anymore. And if you open the back of your camera to look at your photos, you won't be able to see them. You have to develop your film in chemistry or send it to a lab that will do that. And then you can see your images, but it will record your images. The film will, it just won't reveal them until you have um, had the film developed. Now, after you finish your roll of film, it will it should automatically rewind when you finish the end, or if you get partway through and you don't wanna finish it, you can always hold this down to rewind it. The rewinding action is pretty s smooth. It will just rewind the film back into the cassette. By the way, do not do what I'm doing. I know where my fingers are and how not to ruin the, the shutter curtain this way. Uh, I do not recommend other people do this, but it will rewind the film back into the cassette. When it has finished rewinding the film, at that point, you can open up the film back, remove the cassette, 
which will be fully rewound. We're pretending that this one is fully rewound here. See, pretend makes it happen. Now it's fully rewound. You take out your, your finished roll of film, you grab your next roll of film, and then you load it the exact same way if you're going to keep taking photos for the day. If not, you simply close the back and turn off your camera, and you are done taking photos until you use the camera again. So next up, we're gonna talk about the shooting modes, the drive modes they're called, and those are this button right here. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the LCD screen so you can see what's going on more clearly, but as we're going through this, I'm gonna be pushing the drive mode button. So when I push the, if you look at this little square right here, next to my, my the pencil tip, that square indicates that we're in single shot mode. If I push the shutter button, the camera will take a photo. I can keep holding the shutter button down and it will never take another photo. It will only take one photo per shutter button press. Now, if I press the button again, this goes into self timer. Self timer will light up this light here on the front of the camera and count down 10 seconds. At the end of that 10 seconds, it will take a photo uh, using the shutter speed and aperture that are appropriate as the camera deems fit. And then it will automatically switch back to the uh, mode that we had previously. The next mode is called uh, continuous. And with this, the camera will shoot a continuous burst until the film runs out or you let go of the, the shutter button, whichever happens first. Just like that over and over again. And then we're back to single drive mode. Those are the three options. For flash, I'm going to start off by using the flash button right here for all of these functions. We're gonna start with auto flash. Well, we're gonna start with the standard flash mode. If there is not enough light, the camera will pop up the flash automatically. You cannot control whether or not the flash pops up. Only the camera can decide when it's going to do that. Auto flash mode is just the standard flash mode. The camera will use the flash power, aperture, and shutter speed to obtain a proper meter reading and a proper exposure. This next mode here where this eyeball appears next to the flash symbol is called red eye reduction. If you're going to take photos of people, especially using the pop-up flash, this will pulse the flash before it takes a photo to cause the people's, people's pupils to shrink to reduce the appearance of red eye in your human subjects. This next mode is called no flash. The camera will not fire the flash. No flash, by the way, is really good for something like a museum or a piano recital. Flash auto means that the camera will, will use the flash and automatically determine whether it's going to be used red eye reduction or um, also I think it can control the, uh, again, control the power of the flash with this mode. But it will, this gives the camera the ability to automatically control the flash. And then automatic with red eye reduction is automatic flash mode with red eye reduction always. And then we're back to normal flash. Those are the different flash mode settings that this camera will give you. Next up, we're gonna talk about everything here on this mode button on the front of the camera right there. So this mode is going to take us through, a bun if, we're, if we push it once, it's going to take us to portrait, push it again to landscape, push it again to close up, push it again to action, push it again to night portrait, and then push it back to, uh, again, to get to program mode. Okay, that's what the P means. So program mode, what that's gonna do is the camera will determine whether or not to fire the flash. It'll give you the best shutter speed and the best aperture for whatever scene it perceives to be in front of it, and that's program mode. Portrait mode is a mode where you tell the camera, I'm about to take a portrait photo. There's going to be a person in this. So some things you can do to make portrait mode work well are set your lens to the longest end of the zoom range, uh, the 80 millimeter on the kit 35 to 80. If you have something like a 55 to 200, something in the 100 to 135 range will work the best in that situation. And then the camera is going to give you the, a depth of field, which, is a, which will isolate the, the, the person in the photo and give you a blurry background. You can make this more successful, this approach with the this subject isolation, by having the person stand nine to 10 feet in front of the background, and then that will help give you a blurry background. 
The next mode is called Landscape, and it's for landscape photos. The first thing you can do to make this more successful is switch to the wide end of your zoom range in this on this lens, 35 millimeters, and that's going to help give you the best landscape photo you can achieve. The camera will then use a small aperture for a deep depth of field so that you can have something close up, middle distance, and very far distant in, this, in the photo to create a landscape. Something like rocks in the, in the foreground, a lake behind them, and then a distant mountain range where you would capture all of those things in focus would be a good structure for a landscape photo. This next mode is called close up. This is a mode that's going to work best in the 50 to 80 millimeter range of your kit zoom. And this is going to tell the camera that you're going to shoot something which is up close. And so the idea here is that this mode will predispose the camera to use some program mode settings which are good for close up subjects. This next mode is called action or sports. This is another one that works really well at the long end of your kit zoom or with telephoto lenses. If you have the 55 to 200, something in the 150 to 200 range is really good for this. This mode will use bur uh, continuous shooting and if, if it's enabled over here, uh, it will also use a wider aperture so that you can use a faster shutter speed to freeze motion. And the final mode is called night portrait. It is for taking portraits at night. What this mode does is give you a long shutter speed and a flash. You really wanna use a tripod for this if you can because it is a long shutter speed. The idea here is that the flash will illuminate a person and the long shutter speed will allow you to catch something like city lights in the background. You can make this mode successful by making sure that your person doesn't stand up during the photo because what will happen is if, they, if the flash triggers, and the person's like, okay, I'm gonna stand up and walk out of the frame. That photo is gonna continue for a little bit longer. All of the lights that were behind that person will shine through them, and that's just gonna kind of look weird. So if you use this mode, make sure to tell the person you're taking a photo of, hey, wait for a minute, and I'll tell you when to stand up. And then we're back to program mode. Now, there is a uh, only one other thing to talk, well, there's, there's a couple other things to talk about, and then we'll wrap up here. The next one is how to take a photo. Basically, all you wanna to do to take a photo is select your drive mode, select your flash mode, select your shooting mode, and then make sure you're in either autofocus or manual focus as you see fit. And when it comes time to take the photo, just go ahead and take the photo just like that. Nope, that was, even brighter the second time. This camera's design is that it wants you to do your setup ahead of time and then just take the photo as soon as you're ready to take a picture and go. Okay, that's super simple. What about double exposures? You can't do them. This camera automatically advances the film as soon as the photo is taken. It is designed to prevent the chance of double exposures from occurring. And with that, we have covered everything that the Minolta Cutesy can do Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next Camera Manuals video.